Today's art project, pattern mittens. We'll be going over lots of great skills like drawing, cutting, and making repeating patterns. You can also add glitter, string, or other fun stuff if you'd like. The Mitten by Jan Brett. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she said, you'll never find them. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens. And finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped into the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. Now look in this mitten shape. Do you see an animal? The illustrator, Jan Brett, uses this mitten shape to kind of give us a hint about who's coming next. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Who do you think is coming next? Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. Who do you think might try to fit next? It was an owl. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Anyone know what that animal is called? A badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. Do you think there's room? It said the other animals gave him the thumb. Who's next? It was a fox. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. What do you notice is happening to this mitten? Is it getting really stretched out and big? Who's next? Uh-oh. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not one to be left out in the cold. He began to nose his way in. The animals were packed as tightly as can be. But what animal would argue with the bear? Do you think he fit? Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled onto the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Can you give a sneeze? Ah, chew! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. Oh my goodness. What do you notice about these two mittens? I bet Baba is wondering what happened. The first thing for us to do is to draw some mittens. We're gonna use our hands to help us, but your hands are little and we don't wanna draw teeny tiny little mittens. So here's what I'd like you to do. Take one hand and put it on one side of your paper with your thumb out and your fingers together like this. Quack, quack. Then take your pencil. Start at the bottom of your paper. Now, instead of tracing every finger, like you're tracing a turkey or something, 
you are going to go around your whole hand. Don't be afraid to make it way bigger. Bigger is better. It means there'll be more space for us to color. So there's one mitten. Awesome, that's pretty big, but I like it. Now I'm gonna put my other hand down and try with my other hand. If this feels really, really hard to do, ask a grown up to help. It's hard to draw with your opposite hand. <laughs> this one looks a little wobblier, but that's okay. I did my best. I like them. Maybe one of them got stretched out by all the animals in the book. After we've drawn two mittens, we're going to make lines across them. So I'm gonna start on one side of the mitten and draw a line all the way to the other. Let's draw at least four lines. One, two, three, four. You can even draw more lines if you want to. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, and I feel like it needs a little more. There. Now we can decorate our mittens with patterns. A pattern is anything that repeats. If you make one line, is that a pattern? No, how about two lines? Not really, but if you make three or four or five, then it's a pattern. I made some vertical lines and some horizontal lines to make stripes. You get to decide, by the way, if you want your mittens to match and be the same, or if you want them to be different. I kind of like mismatched mittens. So I'm gonna have some parts match and some parts not. Now, if you make stripes that go up and down, and stripes that go across, you get a new pattern. That's called plaid or checkerboard. You can also use lines that we talked about at the beginning of the year, like zigzag lines. You can make a big one or lots of little ones. You could try spots, polka dots, scribbles, Try layering different colors. And shapes. You can also just draw pictures, anything that repeats more than two times. Don't forget to practice writing your name on the bottom of each mitten so it doesn't get lost in the snow. Now you can be all done at this part, or you can add more colors between and around the shapes you made by drawing your lines. This makes the mitten feel extra colorful. After that, practice your cutting. Get a pair of scissors and start at the bottom of your paper. Make sure your thumb is in the little hole. Follow your mitten around the edge. Try turning your paper, not your scissors. And if you get stuck, just kind of cut off that extra big piece of paper. Oh, there you go. And then keep going. Don't worry if your cutting isn't perfect. We're practicing and you can always tape it back together if it rips. In art class, we'll be adding a little piece of string and some glitter on the back. If you don't have string at home and you feel like connecting them, try using your extra paper, have an adult maybe help you make a long line and you can cut off a piece. Then you could staple or tape or glue it to the end of your mitten. That's one way to connect them so they don't get lost. You could also draw a picture on the back if you feel like it. Bye everybody, great job today.